Well, good afternoon, students. Here we are sitting at a picnic table in Portland, Oregon, Fano Creek. This is uh, a beautiful day in September, but I'm very aware that many of you may be doing the sketching class in December or April. So for that reason, today I chose doing a portrait of a tree because you can do trees any time of year. And for all of our Southwest friends, uh, a cactus is a good substitute, that's fine. So what happens with drawing trees? Very often people look at it like this. When people are drawing as a beginning an artist, they often draw a tree like it's a cartoon or from a Christmas card, like that. So that's a fir tree. And if they're doing a leafy tree, then the classic looks like this. And so what I'm going to ask you to do today is look at a particular tree and I'd like you to do a portrait of it. So when you're working with greens, under every circumstance you almost always are going to need three greens. So a light, a medium, and a dark. And you take your pick of which light, medium, and dark. It doesn't really matter that much, but three greens. And it, for this particular tree, this is a uh, Douglas fir and I've chosen for the bark a uh, sienna brown and dark brown. So I would like you to not use black. If you need a really dark color, I'd like you to use dark greens, maybe some indigo, maybe even some uh, black grape and black cherry, but no noir, black please. And I'm gonna start by just putting in a layer of uh, a light brown. This is called sienna brown. And I'm not going to do the whole thing for you. You'll get to see it when it's finished. But I want you to get the general idea of a couple of techniques. So there you've got a layer of sienna brown. Uh, I'm going to put in a little bit more orange on it. Just knowing that uh, more color is always better, right? That's the Cheryl Long School of Thought. More is better in terms of color. And you're going, well, Cheryl, I know that there's a shadow on that side of the tree. So here I've taken a darker brown, and here's how I'm putting in. I'm putting in the shadow, and the shadow is very irregular because it's reflecting. It's not just a straight line. It's reflecting the leaves, or it's casting a shadow on the leaves. So here's some dark brown for the leaves. And you know, when it's a shadow, try to keep it transparent. Instead of going in there and making it really, really dark the way your eye might see it or the camera might see it, try to keep it transparent. You can always make it a little darker later. So whenever I'm working with shadows, I put that dark chocolate brown in there, but I'm also putting in some cerulean blue. It just, uh, remember that we're always thinking about the sky and there's always some sky color here and there. So I put a little bit of blue into the shadow. And then, you know, this is a sketch and you don't need much more than this to indicate the bark on the tree. The bark is really deeply etched. So I've just taken uh, this sienna and I'm just making little marks to represent the bark. If you want something a little darker, this is called dark brown. So I'm going to switch over to um, the tree itself. And you notice I've got it drawn out for you. And notice that the, the branches are going up almost all the time. There's very little of this going down. Most of them are going up. If there's heavy snow on the tree, yeah, it, the snow will make it go down. Otherwise, they tend to be up for the most part. And even though this tree is very dark green, I'm going to put some light green under it because it's going to create a great deal more interest to just have more than one green in there. But this is the green that we're going for. This is a little bit cleaner green than what I really want. So what do you do if the, if the green is a little too pure? Knock it down with a little red. So here's a little bit of uh, red brown. And there we go. It's much closer to being a tree. Okay, bear in mind that I, when I drew this, I indicated a few branches. You can always see some of these scruffy branches in the middle. And probably one of the most important things for drawing trees 
is this is right in the middle of the midline of the tree. Here is a branch right in the middle of the tree and it has a lot of dark green on it but it also has a lot of beautiful pine cones. You'd be missing an artistic opportunity if you didn't pop in those bright sort of golden golden brown and I want you to take a look at all of these nice spaces between. Eventually you'll get in here and you'll be drawing the sky. And remember that these shapes are just as important as the shape of the tree. In fact, this is a lot of what makes the tree look like what it is, is by carefully looking at the spaces between. If those spaces are right, the tree will look correct. See, here's another major space right down here. So when you're drawing, it's all about looking closely and not just at the tree itself, but at the spaces between. And then look carefully at how the tree branches, how the branches go out, and make sure that you're thinking about the volume in the middle of the tree. In other words, you don't just have an outline going, you have the tree has lots of branches that go across the center line. If you do those things, if you can observe the spaces in between and make sure that you're looking closely, you will probably end up with a really nice drawing. So students, if you take a look at the tree and observe it very closely, you're looking at the spaces between the branches, the branching pattern, and making sure that you have volume in the tree. It's round. It has branches all the way around it. Here's our finished sketch. You notice I put a little bit of a warm foreground, some browns, and some cool hills in the background just to give it a little bit of depth. And there you go. So do your best work. I'll show you mine when we're done. And I would love to see your sketches. 